Hi, I'm Daniela Cruz, and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, and our interviewer, Megan Thurgood Johnston, speaks with curator Kenitra Fletcher about the exhibition, Odyssey, Jack Winton Sculpture, 1963 to 2017. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm here with Kenitra Fletcher at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston with the exhibition Odyssey, Jack Witten Sculpture. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, so the exhibition focuses mostly on sculpture by Jack Witten, who's actually known mostly for his paintings. Can you talk to me a little bit about the exhibition and how you curated it in this space? Well, we chose to do, oh, I chose to do it uh, with focusing on certain motifs of his work and then and kind of going roughly chronological but then but also roughly thematic. Um, so in the beginning we start off with works that are presenting um, human attributes, uh, faces and heads and works that generally refer to human bodies, um, anthropomorphic forms that you'll see. Um, and, but we also have paintings dotted throughout the space as well that kind of give you an overview of his painting practice because his sculpture fed into his painting practice. So we moved from faces and heads and bodies into reliquaries that he created when he was, began to visit Greece. Um, and also works that were commemorative, that d dedicates people that he loved, places that he loved, animal life and the natural environment. And then we end with works that are more about power and protection. We have the blades here and also works that incorporate technological um, innovations that you see behind us here. So before going further into his work, I would like to talk about Jack Whitten himself. Sure. So um, he, like, where did he study and who were his um, contemporaries and really what influenced him? Sure. Well, he uh, grew up in the South, in Bessemer, Alabama, and he actually had decided to go to school to be a pre-med student or with the goal of becoming an Air Force doctor. And uh, he then realized he always wanted to study art. He then transferred to Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and um, he got involved with uh, the Civil Rights Movement. And after a terrible experience during March, he fled the South and ended up in New York, where he was accepted into a painting program at the Cooper Union. So that's where he did his, mo his main uh, art training, was done at Cooper Union. And um, he was involved with the entire painting, you know, art scene in New York, uptown and downtown. He knew everyone. He was um, a mentee of William de Kooning, Norman Lewis. He knew Romare Bearden, Jacob Lawrence, Franz Klein, uh, Barnett Newman. So he was very influenced by, you know, the big, uh, somewhat powerful abstract expressionist painters at first. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to fight against, you, you know, the gods and he sort of, he, he knew he had to rebel and create his own kind of work and so he became much more conceptual and started creating like process paintings that he called them. And so these are works that you see on view like Delta Group 2, which is where he was using these very experimental techniques such as putting objects underneath the canvas and then raking across the surface to create these textures. Um, and so, yes, these process paintings became the next evolution of his work. He, I know that he, we, you kind of talked about before, the, the sculptures kind of influence the paintings mm -hmm. and vice versa. Right. So um, also there is a lot of inclusion of some found materials, bone, um, natural materials. Can right. we talk a little bit about the inclusion of those? Yeah, he's definitely merging assemblage with his sculptural practice. Um, there are stories of him, you know, walking around New York and just picking things up off the street, you know, that he's thinking like, you know, I'm going to use that in some way. And I think that's very much influenced by his upbringing in Alabama, where people were always reusing materials because he grew up in a very impoverished and segregated area of the United States. And so you always had to make do and be innovative with the materials you had on hand. Mm -hmm. So he's always making do. So you can see that influence in the work. Assemblage and sculpture came together in his work. In a sense of work. place. It's, it's, yes, definitely. So there are a lot of different kind of references to different places that not only he lived, but kind of resonate with him and his family. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about those places? Right, because, uh, well, coming, he went to the South, to New York. He started going to museums where he would see it 
regularly presented, such as the Metropolitan Museum and the Brooklyn Museum of Art. And he was inspired by the work uh, formally, and that's what inspired him to start carving wood, because he knew he wanted to understand how it was made, but then also culturally in the way it re related to him as a person of African descent. And then in 1969, he visited Greece with his wife, who was Greek-American, um, Mary Whitten. She was uh, looking to research her roots. And uh, they began to go back to Greece every, every summer for, over, for about 50 years. Um, he was very influenced by the local materials and the motifs of Greece, as well as antiquities. And uh, many of the works reflect um, ancient Cycladic art, Minoan art. Um, you see influences of Greek architecture. Uh, this work here, the Apollonian sword, um, was created with molten lead and he knew that builders of the Parthenon in Athens used molten lead to keep um, the columns in their bases. So he was influenced very much by ancient, ancient Greece and African art. Along with the sculptures, we kind of touched on these uh, really mosaic paintings. Yes. Um, I know that in the medium it says acrylic on canvas, but it's a lot more than that. Can you talk a little bit about these black monoliths? Mm -hmm. So they are about African-American great figures in yes. history and in his own life, right? right? Um, can you talk a little bit about those and also sort of the process going into creating those? Sure. Um, yes, the black monolith series are celebrate giants of black cultural history. And he knew some of them and some of them he didn't know, but they were also, there were a lot of, they were about people who had contributed a lot to society. And so you have works that are dedicated to W.E.B. Du Bois, Jacob Lawrence, Ornette Coleman, uh, Barbara Jordan, the Houston Congresswoman, um, Ralph Ellison. And they're, um, lar they're meant to present the essence of that person or their character, the way he saw it, and create a, a symbol out of these materials, which are um, acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. Some of them, most of them are acrylic paint, but then some of them do incorporate eggshells, hair, dirt, all kinds of things. So there is that aspect to some of them. But in general, he created these uh, molds from anything around the place, uh, bottles, whatever he could find. He would create molds of acrylic paint. He would break and then cut or grind them into these um, tiles that he would individually shape and then place on the canvas. In these incredible arrays of, of patterns and angles, he saw the acrylic uh, pieces as ways that he could direct the light in any direction he wanted to. So when you move around the paintings or come up close or move away, you, you have light reflecting off the surface in various ways. So he always worked separately. He would create sculptures Yes. Um, in Greece. Yes, he and lived. And he would a, paint in New York. Yes, he had lived a divided life where he would paint nine months out of the year in New York, and then they would head to Greece every summer for three months, where he would live in Crete and uh, create sculpture. So it's pretty much an ideal life. You know, it's important to see this work because it is something that no one had really known about. He had always been creating the work, but they were living, but they lived in Greece, and so most people know of Jack Whitten as a painter, but um, he was, you know, cr creating this parallel experiment in sculpture the entire time, not necessarily hiding them, but just they were in Greece, so no one really saw them or knew them unless they visited them in Greece. And he, so he didn't really exhibit or sell them. So this is a great opportunity to tell an untold story of one of the most important artists of his generation. Well, the exhibition is incredible. Thank you. And it's so great to walk through. And I, just the way that it's set up and the way that it kind of tells the story as you come all the way through is wonderful. So thank you. Thank and you. Thank you for talking with me today. Thank you, I appreciate it. We want to thank Kenitra for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to mfah.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar.